Hi uh, everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to be looking at Puffin Force getting back into Magic the Gathering trading card game after 12 years. Now when I saw this, I looked up what came out roughly 12 years ago in Magic the Gathering. That's Zendikar. I don't mean the block. Well, I mean the block, but specifically the first set in the first Zendikar. For anyone who doesn't play Magic the Gathering, that doesn't sound like a real word because it's made up for the game. For anyone who does know anything about Magic the Gathering, this is the point where it went from, wow, this is a fun set, to the next two years where it was, oh. And by that, I mean the trend of not just cards becoming more powerful, but Eldrazi Titans came out after this by months. Just okay, maybe a two years by that. Just mm. and then there's just so many incredibly powerful cars that are now staples in modern format, just givens at this point. And legacy cards that have come out within the last 10 years are now in the 20 to 30 year old bracket of legacy where people play for two hundred fifty thousand dollars i'm actually never mind it's 150 no 100 it's a freaking half million dollars at a freaking tournament every year yeah that's the thing of magic and ben is getting back into 12 years having missed all of that so he's going to go from some pretty admittedly powerful sets that were kind of cool like the entire revive you know time spiral just happened which is a great set and i love it and then they did that and and now he's getting to see the oh my god level of power rocket ship. It's not creeping. They put steroids. Steroids weren't enough. They injected jet fuel. Jet fuel wasn't enough. They lit that jet fuel on fire and spontaneously created rocket engines to shoot themselves in their stratosphere and thought, you know what? Let's go faster. That's basically the last 10 years of Magic the Gathering. And Ben was 12 years ago. So basically, I don't know what Puffin Forest is going to do with this video. But I do know a lot of it will probably be a lot of the lines of the fu, which is probably the accurate representation of just that level of powerful in the last few years. There's some really damn good cards. Or the fact that planeswalkers are now uncommons. And the uncommons are actually really good. Yeah. Like, I, I collect uncommons now like I used to collect rares. I, I just save almost all of them because some of them are just really damn good. So, do I know where this is going? No. But I really want to find out, because I've been out for about the last year or so, here and there collecting. But I know what's going on, and that's why I know it's so... Th there's power up there. I really want to see his reaction. <laughs> so you guys know the deal. Link below, original video. Make sure to hit that up. I'm just going to geek out on this one. So if you enjoy that, link below, my video. You did? The little subscribe button? Hit that already? Great. <laughs> Let's get started. I used to play Magic obsessively in middle and high school. It was College a great game me. to play at school because you could just bring a deck in your pocket and play a game in like five to ten minutes. Uh, there was almost no setup to speak of. Not an EDH. I got out of it around the time I went to college. After D&D, I was starting to get back into board games a little bit. Concerned girlfriend. I wanted to teach my girlfriend magic because I'm like, it's a classic, you gotta play it. And she's like, no, 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 it's not for me. And I was like, you have to play magic once since we've played all these other card games. <laughs> but it was kind uh, of a yes. hard sell because, yeah. Cardboard there's crack. There's a lot of, ah... Uh, not really problems per se, but um, creative design decisions that endear us to the game, but might not gel well with most people. Yeah. Like, for example, the game's not fair. No. When two people play against each other, both decks don't have an equal chance of winning. No. Plus, there's a whole no, lot they of really prep don't. work getting a deck set up yeah. before you actually play. Plus, since there's World's no way to most know most complicated game, it has been running confirmed. beforehand, you could have a lot of useless cards. Like, there's there's not much balance to speak of. Yeah. My brother and I had gotten rid of several of our bolt cards, so I ended up getting a pack of used ones at the game store. If you don't know, booster packs come with 10 commons, and because they often don't Not see anymore. play and people get hundreds and hundreds of copies of them, you can just walk into a local game store and buy bulk magic cards by the pound. We I just want to point out this idea. If you're playing in some of the bigger formats, terrible idea, don't do that. If you're playing Popper... Yeah, go for it. Uh, poppers where every card is either uncommon or below a dollar in price. I don't remember which one it is, but this is actually a really good strategy to get into it. And there's some really good decks. Just red burn. Yeah. If you want to get into magic, that's actually a great way to do it. We ended up paying $7 to buy a stack of 800 commons. 
we could have gotten 2400 for $15. I mean, that is a colossal oh my God, of that's a card, less than a cent a card. Okay, one, I have seen these boxes. But did you see that little mousy thing behind him? Oh my God, I want that. All at near mint. So the Harvey started off pretty cheap. Started. 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 Yeah. Keyword there. That's a lot of black. Then I'm in an all play deck. An all play deck is a format Ooh. where everyone draws from the same deck of cards. Oh? There's no drafting. You just draw two cards, scrap one. Oh. Five basic lands That's are put cool. off to the side, and you play lands from that pile. Oh. An all play deck doesn't have to be popper or just commons. I've actually never heard of this that's style. That's what I got. That's what we That's used. pretty cool. When I first got back into it, magic was definitely the cheapest hobby at the time when I was using an all-play deck. And man, I really like playing that way. And it's a great format to kind of teach. Yeah, yeah, no, everything he said is, that's cool. Really great way to teach people. I'm just, the phrase magic and cheapest in the same sentence. Magic the Gathering is the hobby that makes collecting Warhammer models look affordable by comparison. And to have someone, unironically, and with a good point, in their right mind, unaddled by excessive amounts of drugs, say that is really weird. Like, I'm, I'm literally... Wrapping my mind around this, and yes, in the format he's talking about, it makes sense. But it's just so weird to hear, though. Yeah. New people, since you get a variety of cards, um, you don't have to make a deck that's personalized to each yeah, person. I guess getting and rid you of those aspects jump into and see what's going on. After a while, I knew it was finally time for me to go through my old cards. Probably some of them are super duper valuable, because. They're old. Some That's might be. How that works, probably. Like, uh, I uh, engineered plague. What? Are you kidding me? It's still good. Sense? This was like a black deck staple for a while. It's still not bad. Uh, it counters, uh, uh, goblin decks, elf decks. Uh, maybe. Again, you have that's elf, actually have still not bad. Decks? What about braids? Oh, oh, she's she's banned now. <laughs> because Honestly, she's like, I good. get it. The card can completely deadlock the game. On the second turn. Yeah. So, uh, that's, uh... Yeah. That makes sense. Please, 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 welcome to Ben's Older Card Store. Ew. Welcome. You're not looking for something like Divining Top. Ooh. No, 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 no. You are quite the savvy consumer with an eye for taste. I see your gaze draws upon to this worm fang behemoth, which Ooh, five, makes you five. discard all of your entire hand. But it's it's one, one colorless man. I cheaper. know a deck where that and works. I don't like it. Or what about? But it works. Sapphire Leech, which is great if you're playing a blue deck, which uh, doesn't have any blue cards in it, Ugh. because he makes all of your blue cards more expensive. Not quite sure what they were going. Oh shit! There's a good deck. Um, there's a mechanic that you can give cards to other people. I hate that deck. I hate it so much. And that card is absolutely perfect for it. Oh shit! I don't like thinking that. Going with for this card. It's or a great card to give away. Ixidor, who gives face down creatures, plus one plus one. All it came back. It's actually really good now. Even your opponent's cards get buffed. Ah, uh, I forgot about or that card. Or leveler, five. Again, or a, 10 a good 10. for the giveaway deck. But it, it forces you to remove your deck. Force someone else to have it. You know, I used to make fun of this card a lot, but now since there's stuff that lets you win the game if you have no deck. It actually might be useful. Yes, finally. it is. I've lost or Twitch so many times and I hate it. Which causes players to skip their upkeep steps. Oh, this is so broken. Uh, I love it. Which I think the other players would murder me if I played it. Yes. Not with the Out of game murder, even. But physically strangle me yes. across the table. Yes. Having been Over on the other end, it's justified. Sarah Sanctum. Still good. Is one of the few cards yes. that got more expensive. <laughs> That's how much it's at. <laughs> Holy shit. To $250 for one card? I'm just going to look that up quickly because I think it might have gone up. Okay. <sighs> According to the price card, price guide, money thing on TCG Player, the median moderately played, not mint, price 
is $279.95. So that went up for a played, slightly beat up version. For a market price normal one, it's $312. When he made this video, it has gone up since then. Since he edited this... Fuck. I remember seeing these for 100 and thinking it was a lot. And now I'm just like... Dogecoin moment. Okay. My brother had put four in his enchantment deck because he said he needed them. After organizing all the cards, I had to make something called the Box of Shame so that I don't have to waste my time continuously sorting cards that no one will ever play with. I mean, you like, can still get uh, some fun stuff. This guy? Or, uh, Honestly, this guy, Night Deck is fun. Or I, uh, Ooh, that looks fun. Or I put the goblins in here because they're just some of these cards are a little bit too particular. There's that. To use. Ooh, oh. That's actually not a bad Since one. Since I had been out of the game for 12 years, I had to learn about Planeswalkers. Yeah. Then I learned about Mana Burn apparently not being a thing anymore. Except for the card that makes it a thing it took now. took me all of two games to be like, yeah, yeah, that's, this is much better. Yeah. Now moving on to the commander format. It's a multiplayer eee, game where each favorite. deck has a commander. You select a creature card and it hangs off to the edit. side in your command zone. You can play them from that zone. And when they're defeated, they go back. Yep. But each time you have to resummon them, it gets more and more expensive. It adds up fast. Also, you're only allowed to have one copy of each card in your deck instead of the usual four limit. With the one uh, exception being the rats so, that say you can. Uh, the first time I learned about it, I was like, what? That sounds like a terrible format. That d doesn't sound like magic at all. It I really isn't, but it's me. the most popular no, format really now. Cool. Don't worry, it's super fun. And then I promptly got knocked out in the fourth turn. They promised me wouldn't happen again. Third turn they next were time. Right. It was the fifth turn. Oh, we my friend dropped back. the three hundred six sixes with flying onto the board. Yeah. With trample. In case you're wondering the details, in the first game he was playing a blim deck. It gave me Deferius Lich, and in the second game it was a mutated Scoot Swarm. <sighs> After playing those, I was like, this game is bullshit and not balanced and not that much fun. I agree but with the first two. After a few it's more definitely games, not balanced. It won me over. <laughs> I kind of like the wild, crazy shenanigans now that you can have. Yeah. If you're in last place, people tend to leave you alone. Yeah. I had to buy some new. Try the cards Burning Seas deck, Commander, since uh, legendaries were actually pretty rare cards type back in the day. If I had to make a Commander deck based on my old cards, it'd have to be something like Sazatic, uh, a Tog a Tog deck. Ooh, that's not bad. Oh boy. I can sack an Atog to get more power. If you make everything in a Atog, that actually gives you a lot. Oh. Until end of turn. No. Oh. There's a few cards that say everything is now insert creature type here. That's five color. You can run it. So you just go with a lot of cards and give them modular or abilities that let them keep counters around and you just keep sacking them and oh that I mean it might not be game breaking but that actually would work I don't even really have well other dogs. no one has a talk you can make it turns. work when you're playing four Through copies cheating. of a card it actually limits the number of decks that you can make but yeah. there's a lot more variety when you're only allowed one card. Yeah, which makes it more you fun. You can't necessarily rely on getting that one thing that you need every game. Functional reprints are a thing, Except though. your commander. But you can't rely on any oh, God, other Derevi. card. Really, that makes the decks have kind of an aura of mystery. Ooh, what's going to be coming off the Again, top of this time? Deck. Another land? Yep. There's only ten mountains in this deck. Plus, it actually oh, changes how you're opening packs, because before, since you want to get four copies of stuff before running in a deck, it forces you to kind of hoard multiple copies of yep. good cards. And if you open a pack and get a really good one, you have to wait to get through more Still a good card before Ugh. running in a deck. But if I might say a minor gripe, I kind of don't like shuffling a hundred card deck. It's just, it's just, it's a little yeah. too no, he's right. in my it hands. Sucks. There's just, there's something it, it's about really shuffling a 60-card deck. Like this, this right now, so in Commander that, format, that just annoying to a watch. Game, and there's not much regulation in the same way that you have in a competitive scene. The rules committee allows most cards, which makes sense, because if a table is abusing a card, they don't want to ban it for all the other groups. Each table is supposed to self-regulate, and whenever there's a combo or strategy that people find obnoxious, you're supposed to cycle it out. And so there's a lot of decks that 
you know, if people don't like them, you're supposed to not run. Like, yeah, just generally not being an asshole. prevent your opponents from playing cards. There are decks that prevent your opponents from drawing. Yep. There are decks that prevent your opponents from just taking turns. Yep. No turns for anyone. There's a deck that was banned. It was Unfortunately. Banned. It just prevent them from taking I actions. I have an answer. It's like just, drawing. It's a common problem playing, that's in the commander untap. format. Trying to find this ideal balance that makes everyone happy, which, sadly, there's probably not going to be an answer for that. Yeah, d d it really depends commanders. more on who you play with than Kenrith, what you play. Thantis, and Edric. Those have been great. Oh, ooh. In addition to them, I've also been having a lot of fun with Corona. All right, funny thing. I rotate through decks pretty quickly. In between writing the script and drawing the art for the video, I scrapped my Edric and Thantis. Thantis? Eh, whatever. Thantis X. And swapped them uh, with a Grungly and Sliver deck. I'm very happy with that you have a Sliver deck. Is that a Sliver with Cascade? Sliver spells have cascade. I did not know about that. Oh. Oh, that's not cool. Oh, that's really not cool. I mean, it's amazing, and I want it, and I can break it in so many ways, but oh. Sliver decks weren't weak. And that! Like, you can't see it, but I got, a, like, a nervous, cold sweat thinking about having to play against... a supercharged Sliver deck, because if there's one thing Slivers need... It's card advantage. It's like, hey, I played a sliver. I get another sliver. I got another sliver. I got a sliver. <laughs> I did not know that thing was real. Corona. Corona the false god. It's, so it's what actually does fun. Corona do? Uh, every round, after you make an attack, yep. uh, you give another player Corona. All you have to do have it, is put up a wall saying you can't be player, hit, and everyone else and, dies. And uh, it just kind of goes around the table, making sure that it's everyone actually a fun has, card. has it. Other cards I've been enjoying, or I think are kind of interesting, are Time Sifter. Oh. Hey, do you guys hate taking turns? Well, what if you didn't have to take turns anymore? Well, now, with Time Sifter, turns are random. Every round, everyone reveals a card off of their deck. Whoever has the highest number takes the next turn. Oh. So yeah, you could have five turns in a row or none. We had one game where I played this card and someone else had a card that, that says... That sounds you crazy, turn, fun, and stupid so and no one annoying at the same time. Start their turn, and one player got five turns in a row, going from 40 health to two. Fun times! My brother, when we were kids, wanted to make a competitive Time Sifter deck... But, uh, you, make that you know, just couldn't quite make oh, it work you since you have to have a lot of expensive cards and expensive cards need mana. So it had to be padded with lots of lands and yeah. ramps, which was, was cheap. Artifacts could probably fix it uh, now. Just, it, it didn't work out that well. Fiery Gambit. You can flip up to three coins. At any time, you can stop flipping. If you win one flip, you deal three damage to a creature. If you win two Not flips, bad. you do that and deal six damage to each opponent. And if you win three flips, you do those two, plus draw nine cards and untap all the lands you control. I've, I've never got... I mean, yeah, it's hard to win three in a row because what are the odds? Okay, someone probably actually knows the odds, but I'm just thinking Karax Thumb, where you get to re-flip a coin if you want. Like, normally it's just like a silly little sidecar, but just, sure, why not? This card actually makes it useful. I wonder if there's enough cards with similar effects that actually make that entire deck idea useful. I've gotten all three flips before. The way I've done the map, and if I keep putting it in every deck, eventually, eventually, one day, if he gets get it. thumb and some of the other so effects. So those are the cards I wanted to show and tell, but this is not where that ends, because I asked everyone in my playgroup, for two of their favorite Ooh, or kind of the one guy had the cool cards that they wanted to show. He has little sparkles. Here they are. Enjoy. Okay, so I've got a five-color commander picks. deck whose commander is uh, Progenitus, who's all five colors, costs ten mana. To oh, you're out. that guy. He's, forget him. He's not important. What's important are two cards that are Oh, no, he's one of those guys. I really, really, really love. It the just scares everyone with Progenitus. They all wait for it. They don't count. Chromatic Lantern. 
If you don't Still know about a damn good card, yeah. it is a three drop mana rock. Auto mana fix. Tap for any mana color rock. mana, but it also means that all of your lands. I love this card. It's an amazing card in Commander. It's so freaking good in five reason, color. When I was still playing magic and buying cards it was extremely cheap to get i don't know why it's so good it's good for any it was uh, cheap before deck. something i would always recommend having in pretty much any deck that has Ooh. two or more colors and the second card is yeah, another artifact called the door to nothingness now, love this card this, yes you're in for a treat it's in my it's five, five deck. drop artifact i'm, I'm card that asshole that uh well it comes into play tapped and then if you go an entire round and nobody does anything about it. And you, you can, can cheat it in because it's just an artifact. Two of every color. There's so it, many ways now. It, and point to a player at the table and tell them to leave. <laughs> and it isn't trigger is on sorcery. You can just say whatever you I want. You just hold it. To beat several it's like, oh, you're about to kill me? You're dead. Because a lot of times by the time you have 10 mana, two of every color to be able to use Door to Nothingness... It's usually too late for anyone to do anything about yeah. it. Everyone's kind of uh, tapped out. They don't have anything ready to go to get rid of your and it's door. So, so good. you just sort of Especially if you cheated in right before your turn. until it's your turn again. I love quickening and then you effects. Take them out. I love it. Two it's so good. of my favorite magic cards to play in Commander are Arcades the Strategist what? and Exquisite Blood. I don't think I. Arcades the Exquisite... Strategist. Oh. He's a commander of. Walls. I don't know this card. I love him, and he's actually the commander from one of my favorite commander decks I own. Uh, he's my favorite commander I've ran, and that's oh. mostly because the deck itself is so cheap. Oh, my. Regarding both the mana cost and the cost of putting that the deck together. That is good. Too. Defender I equals don't card advantage. Card Defender with equals damage. Cost higher than four, really. And even all the spells it's and equipment are drop? super cheap because they only M19, buff the yeah, defense. they had a lot of good stuff. One of his key abilities is each creature you control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather yeah. than its power and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. And That's pretty much the whole defender, reason why you have him as commander in this deck. You turn one of your zero ton walls into a 10 ton truck. And usually, if I line things up, I can. They're usually a cheap cards to oh. defense, which gives creatures. All of them, zero plus five, and reach, and then just swing all, board wiping the table and winning in like one or two turns. And there are so many ways to make this deck so cheap. They get too. Fesh not to mention the crazy card draw Arcades gives you too. I didn't even know about this card. card. How did I not know about this time card? A creature with Defender enters the battlefield under your control. Super customizable since it's green, white, and blue. All around, Arcades is what makes this deck amazing because. But it's so simple. Him, it could probably work well just to hold really off until you much. have him. And he's so cheap! My other favorite card is probably Exquisite Blood. Is it? It's one half of a Drain Life Infinite <sighs> combo. This thing. And if you've ever played with me, you'd know that one of my favorite things in Magic are its alternate win conditions. Yeah. Any way to win that doesn't involve. You lost life. I gain this life. I gain life. You lose this life. Great for me. Exquisite Blood is whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. And if you pair it up with a card like Sanguine Bond or Viscopa Guild Mage, who have uh, the... I mean, I love and hate this card in equal measure. It's life, so good, so but it's also... That much life, you see someone play this and you know, okay, they die combo. next. It's beautiful. And it's really... They either put out the too. entire combo or they die next. There's really no other option. I a deck I called taxation without representation what? and it would just be full orzov deck back when extort was the name of the game in like 2011 it's still pretty good the actually goal of that deck was to simply win because by technically extortion. you could play it in decks that don't have the right colors because it's the an, idea of losing a, a life and gaining to, a life at the time it's not entirely worded correctly using so you can actually put blood. a black card simply in a white deck and still have it fit simply because it didn't just slowly grow into a bad situation no, no no if i busted it out it was just suddenly very very bad and you either had one turn or even that turn that! Until you're out. And I gotta throw in an honorable mention, because I know you asked for two, but... Oh? Amanato, the Fate Shifter. I don't know this card. She's a Planeswalker. She's only, like, oh. 12. Oh. And she can mess up the entire plan of the entire table if Draw she gets card. the chance. Library, top Her Planeswalker okay. abilities are okay in Oh, general. so the top card uh, is just really the top. work with the deck that she oh. initially came with. But the kicker Blink is middle? her minus six. Choose left or right. Each player gains control of all non-land permanents, other than her herself, by the next player in the chosen direction. Sometimes, <gasps> and especially in Commander, you need just enough chaos to keep the game rolling. This will 
definitely do that. So basically, after a board wipe, that guy has their turn. You steal their turn. And suddenly, everyone is scrambling with a board. That this is actually a good place to just land. wipe your... Oh. It's oh. one of the best ways to really just scramble up the game when you have nothing left to lose. Sudden disappearance yourself. And play this I've card. Play, use her six. And, oh, boy. It gets people so... It's not impossible. Hard, but not impossible. I don't care because it was fun. So the first card I want to share is one of my favorite commanders, Ilharg the Razebor. Uh It's a mono-red it's, pig. It's actually good. Uh, whenever he attacks, you get to take a creature from your hand and put it onto the battlefield. Yeah. And attack kind of surprised he doesn't have greenness Which cost. is really fun Always for a whole weird. bunch of different reasons. Uh, it gets around stuff like propaganda and ghostly prison. Yeah. Because the Cheating thing comes things in is after my favorite. declared attackers, so you can just swing at them anyway. Turn the top when it dies. Uh, it gets big so things good. into uh, battle almost dies immediately. or exile so as well. something like a blight steel colossus from your hand in if you wanted to. I don't because this is a deck that I want to own all the cards for and god that's expensive. Uh, How much is blight steel? I had a few copies of it. Is abusing enter the battlefield ago. triggers. So I have a whole bunch of stuff that has really big impactful things that happen when the creature yeah. enters the battlefield like deals three damage to everything on the field, Ooh. destroys artifacts, Ooh. deals direct damage to people, etc, etc. Et um, just a bunch of crazy things that happen like that. So when Ilharg swings, it happens. And then the caveat with Ilharg's cheat ability is that at the end of it the turn, just happens that card goes back to my hand. And so you can do it again. Whatever I'm cheating in with him becomes a essentially repeatable effect every combat. I also I have a even... whole bunch of enchantments that care about oh, that's things evil. That in the battlefield for similar oh, reasons. Oh, I love that. Things like Panharmonicon, which double up those triggers. But uh, another thing that I really like about oh, this it's an card artifact. He can is go in any deck. Oh, shit. There at the bottom, whenever he would die or be put into exile, instead he goes the into the The only way to get rid of him is basically to top. put him and at the bottom of someone's that's deck. That's very nice for giving around commander tax if you feel like you can't afford it and you'd have to wait a couple yeah. of turns anyway. Yeah. Or if you know that you have a draw spell. And if they ever exile the deck, it's then put in the exile. You can into the command zone. And you can cast him without paying the commander tax, which is great. So freaking good. The second card I want to talk Sphinx about is Sphinx Sun? of the Second Sun. It's not the best card, but it's really it's good. Expensive, but if you put it in a deck that really wants it, or a deck where you can cheat it out, it's kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. The is a little bit weird, but essentially, if it's on the field at the start of your post anything that triggers phase, in the beginning, you, you get, get double a beginning phase He's at a the seven, end of your turn, eight drop. and your beginning phase is your untap, your upkeep, and your draw step. This card works well with pretty much anything that cares about you having multiple upkeeps. There's a lot of stuff in the game that happens. Like anything on that happens on your upkeep, upkeep just happens twice, and it's so broken. But the fact and it that includes it's not the just untap. An upkeep, it's literally an entire beginning phase. It's, it's, if nothing else, it's a double draw. You also get it's a minimum of, of two draws. Stuff, like you have a wilderness reclamation out, and you get to draw a card, which is great. The you thing can cast I really something like about upkeep. it, though, is how it synergizes with the core. You top again after that. Which is a set of enchantments from Commander Legend that say when they enter the battlefield you become the monarch and then at your upkeep they do a thing yeah but if you're the monarch oh. they do that thing but bigger i now, forgot the about is those something that you lose if you are attacked so the idea behind these cards is that they come into the battlefield and then you're rewarded for somehow keeping the monarch through an entire rotation of and the but table, you didn't so it's cheating and i love it you have potentially like three people uh, trying to attack you and it's very unlikely that one of them isn't going to get through but with sphinx of the second son you can have that card you become the monarch I want this. and then without the table rotating oh god this deck oh at the geez. end of your turn unlike this entire video is going to destroy my wallet you get. so you oh, immediately no. get the buffed benefit this this is just torture right now I also entered magical christmas damn land you ben damn card, you puff and like, forest for making me enjoy this thing decks, I just, oh crazy, god it's giving me ideas stop giving me ideas i played sphinx of the second son and i cloned it so i had two of them and then i had something on the field that gave me flash so i essentially got an extra turn because i would have my first upkeep and then play the a bunch upkeep. of stuff Third on upkeep. that first upkeep and then i'd get another upkeep so i'd have like three turns in a turn and it's crazy and i don't know why it keeps happening to me because this is not a good card and it should not be happening this consistently but it's really cool when it does okay so Sphinx Ambassador. Damn. The thing that I really like about Sphinx Ambassador. Sphinx Am oh, uh, this is one. That it kind of. <laughs> this is just a fun card. Creates a game within a yeah. game. Yeah. Of when you're, uh, whenever it's dealing <laughs> combat damage to a player. Honestly, I have this card. It's not the best, but it's just fun. For a card, and mind then control. they name like a mind card. Games in real life, and not you search game for a creature control. card that isn't the named card, then 
you can put it onto the battlefield under your control and they get to shuffle their library. Yeah. And hey, if nothing else, flying five five. Obviously, your first inclination is probably going to be to take the best creature, except then that's the one that they're going to guess. Yep. So you would take the second best one, unless they assume that's what you did, in which they're going to also name the second best one. Which is why one. you go blue, black. Uh, and I'm sure that there is with a, a revive mechanic. perfect, logically correct solution to it, but it just kind of feels like the poisoned cups in the princess bride to me yep. uh, and i love that and i feel like that really There's is so the best much to way do to here. have a sphinx riddle vibe is by making that kind of brain game happen in the middle of your game of magic Miri Weatherlight Duelist is awesome for a couple of reasons. Wait, is that? The first and most important one is that it's adorable. <gasps> that's a baby Miri! Uh, the second oh my is god, that's adorable! That adorable. And the I didn't even recognize her! That mechanically I is this like an alternate like art? A great way oh my god, it's so freaking cute! Like the big eyes! <laughs> Whenever Miri Weatherlight Duelist attacks, each Miri's opponent awesome. can't block with more she's than a great, one creature. We're now going to do one on one stuff. And as long as she's tapped, I, God, no more just, than one creature can attack. I didn't attack even know they had alternate combat, art of this. Which I didn't. I thought this was a new card. Like, really Miri, I, feels I thought we already had this big. Oh, one -on -one dude, she's chewing on the dagger. Oh, so adorable. Uh, in, in a creative way. I need to show this a pretty like guardian. That. And then the fourth reason is that it's adorable. Yes. Yes. What, so I just talk right now? Uh, so, hey, so uh, Alan, what are your two favorite cards? What, what cards do you have for show? Oh, my God. Oh, talk about? God, there's... I'm kind of surprised no one did something like some Thought shit, Seas or... I figured I just... One braids that blue. I wish I had, like, She's 20 copies fun. of that I can put into all my decks. Uh, that being Ugin the Ring? Spirit Dragon. Ooh, oh, oh. Uh, he actually has a special place in my heart, too, because that was the very first Planeswalker I pulled out of a that was your deck. Every other one I fucking bought. And I just, what is, you what is pulled you that? Do? It's like he. Oh, uh, sorry. He you lucky son of a. Seven loyalty tokens, loyalty counters, whatever. And he has. Three Gain seven life. Draw seven two. cards. Put seven well, permits from your hand onto the battlefield. That's not right. Yeah. Oh. Minus X. Also, he's Exile colorless. You can go artifact with bullshit. Cost X or less. That's one or more colors. And he has a minus 10. You gain seven life. Draw seven cards. Then put up to seven permanents from your hand onto the battlefield. I'd like to point and out a permanent really with cost zero is a land. Deck, and so you, <laughs> anything you're putting onto the board, like that's the hardest part. Of the deck is getting, I see your it's one or more colors. Okay, so it'd have to be a colored board. land, but also, those do like, exist now, so yeah. Board wipe, like every turn, you can. I mean, like he's gonna lose counters, but like every yeah. other turn, you can kind of board wipe with him. Yeah, and like when he hits the field too, he's seven. You can you, you can just nuke everything right there, including himself, to just everything seven costs or less. It's just uh, wiped from the field. Each permanent with three mana costs X or less. That's one or more colors. So it gets around indestructible. It gets around a lot of other stuff. If you can turn all. And... Oh, I forgot it's exile. Yeah. 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 Yeah, if you colored the lands, okay. there would be a way to. I don't to think do I've that. ever played a game where Still, someone that's... plays Ugin and. He's like, a board wipe on the easy card. mode. Oh, no. Or if you. Oh, oh God, no. doubling season him. <laughs> Usually the token heavy jack. Everybody's you can do like, a board wipe like, first turn and then do the second turn to get everything back. Yeah, and you can technically minus zero. Yeah. Every token is gone. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, the as someone card, who plays a five color warrior deck, yeah! Second card was going to be Oath of Druids. Oh? And I actually know this one. <laughs> so the the cliff note summary for how that card works is that um, if an opponent has more creatures than you, um, you can actually uh, mill cards off of the top until you find a creature, and then that card automatically comes into play. Also, this is an enchantment that just costs two, so you can get it out Other really early. In the game. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So it's Good graveyard job. mill and a free uh, creature. One in a green. And it's, I, I love how you're shaking your head right now. I, <laughs> it's only I a two drop. Memories associated with those of Druids, Courtney. Because the thing is, your you anger put it, feeds me. <laughs> you put I've played Magic for over deck, a, oh, close to two decades like, oh, now, and I, I didn't even know. Two, two. And then you're like, it I just never came up in my play group, and I'm just seeing it now, and, and it's, it's like, like oh, turn. wow. And, um, it, it also it helps to like speed up the game because a lot of times, oh, you're stuck and it's stale. 
there's a thought like, well, if everyone's getting creatures, everyone's going to be fine with it. But there's always some people. I just get some of these things. I, there's a card shop right by my house. Bigger just... creature like the oh, Ulan oh, decks. Oh, God. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> dragon oh, decks. rip and my it wallet. Kind of, it, it helps everyone, but it helps you more. That's why you put it into a deck. This is evil. Uh, with Each drills, player's upkeep, too. It just decks, whatever. I, I mostly just I mostly just deal in like swinging, hitting. It just you'll be really funny with I, this? I'm a simple... Simple. And I'm going to sound like an ass for saying this. Yeah. I want to summon and then certain... I want to hit. I was going to say Black Prince. Well, uh, Sheldred, it that's it. Sheldred, yeah. 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 It's because uh, everyone's getting yeah, 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 keep sacrifice a creature. Yeah. So yeah, you get a creature, and, uh, but then you lose a creature. Sudden, everyone doesn't have a creature, so you have yeah. less creatures. That's what I like about it. It's just, you know, somebody's <laughs> going to be fewer if someone has. I just mm-hmm. and you can choose you know, they, either they, they you have the creature and they leave somebody else to pull one out, or you sack your creature to pull one out. Other big creatures. Everybody's worried about everybody else. And that's why I like it so much. Oh, God, I love this. All right. So for my so much temptation. I pick two red cards. Normally, I wouldn't pick two red? red cards. Really? Because they're both the same color, and that seems kind of whack. But back when I played in high school, uh, I used to go and play competitively in tournaments oh. in a format called 1.5, or 1.5. Uh, I guess it's better known as Legacy. Uh, oh, and I oh shit! He's one of them. Consistently play against the meta, and the meta was white blue control, a bit of reanimator, some enchantments. I hate white blue control and uh, this like weird green crap that you? I think was sometimes else. You, you play I against can't the meta. Remember, you're all right because uh, I always just nuked them, so it didn't really matter what they were playing. Uh, but I had a beast deck, and nobody did that in so Legacy. I think the most expensive thing I had in there was a four four beast for four. That would say sack a beast, gain four life. And for the life of me, oh. I can't remember the name of that card. I have no idea. Um, but two cards that were always really crucial. Please, please say in drop a needle just for the sheer. Uh, were lulls. these two red cards. The first one was uh, Tefroderm. And that's from Onslaught. And it's a 4 5. Damage. Deals that much damage to target creature. When any target dealt damage, damage to it, it would deal damage right back to that. Oh, yeah, it so it's it to damage the creature, reflection. And then if it was the. Nice. player would deal it back to the player and oh. i love this card because uh i could turn one play a forest birds of paradise turn two seething song and get this tefranerm out on the board in second turn that's like oh yeah this like gives the manner oh and once it's on the board and then you either hit or they block and it does and damage it back and secured Ooh. me effectively like, doubling at least damage. 12 damage somewhere in the course of the the game and then eventually we get off the board but it, it it always does job if I could get it out. And it just two. holds things up and so even easily. if I was getting it out, you know, turn three, turn four. They either four, have to waste a spell had quite a and bit just of delay themselves. For all the same reasons. Oh, it's just such but, good tempo. Man, Tefranerm, I, I owe so many games to Tefranerm. Yeah. Um, it's just a solid card. I mean, among other cards in my deck. but Tefranerm Pretty damn expensive, but you have the deck set up for it. Always, always really helped me through a lot of those tournaments. Oh. Um, and so I'll always have a lot of memories there. Now, the other red card, I also have a ton of memories. Far fewer, but way, what way, is it? way far. I'm actually really curious this time around. Um, I used to also play this card, Arc Slogger. And I, I kept I've him seen in this the guy deck, a lot. You know, like, cards on paper, you game. look at him. He's rare. <laughs> he's a beast. He's a four, five, five, five. drop. So that's already you like, know if, ugh, oh, that's disgusting, right? Even, red, even blue removal time, like, of your own deck now is a thing. So that would be a way to win pretty easily and do damage. Uh, and then his ability is not bad. Red. Remove the top 10 cards of Especially if you have a way to get them. Oh, God, you can get cards back from Exile now. Player. That's almost like just giving yeah, yourself an extra trash, deck to draw right? from. I mean, that's pretty trash for most people. Most. Uh, if you have the deck for it, though. Somehow, uh, there were so many times when I would draw into him, and he's like just exactly what I needed. Oh. Because and it does give you basically a lightning and, bolt. Not a lightning bolt. You know, a spark or a shock on command. Point. Like we've gotten a bit late. You have a way to take advantage my, of the mail or the not, self. You know, my aggro might have been stalled and, and the other players got control going on. I still don't like the fact he's a five. But he was a four drop. That would actually be really dark. Good. Slogger, I could throw him on the board. And he didn't need to tap, so there's no concerns oh. about so many sickness. Oh, you're and right. I could he just doesn't. Almost deck myself and win the game. And. Those games were How just the greatest because I I'm taking this piece of shit card, especially when know, you, it was probably like a sixty cent card. Are the retro at the time, and I don't know. 
<laughs> I'm winning again. <laughs> and the look on the other person's face is like, I didn't even know this card existed. I've seen him so <laughs> much every time I go to any store. Like, they're always in the binders. Like, oh, yeah, this thing. This it's like 25 thing cents. threw away 40 cards from his deck so that he could, or 30, it's usually 30. Cause it's only six like, damage, but if you need six. By that point in the game, you're a 60 card deck. You're only going to have like 37 or something in your deck. So the most you could do with this card is six goddamn damage. And so the look on their face is like, ah, shit. Oh, it's priceless. Just too good. I kind of want to do this. To steal a game with this but it's not so, a good card, but it's um, worthwhile Arc if you have the deck for it. will forever be uh, my favorite card. Yeah. Uh, and I recently it's started five playing instead of Commander, 10, and I got a triple kill with Arc Slogger. And that triple kill Damage has produced some Wound great Art Slogger based art, which uh, hopefully right. will show up in this. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Those are my cards, and they're surprisingly they're interesting babies, choices. So there, not the most powerful, but just or good flavor and usage. Um. All right. So you have two. What are your two? Why should John like she's crying? Cards that you want to talk to us about? <sighs> I'm very new to Magic. You know that. Yeah. But one of my favorite things that I gravitate towards is running things that give me monies and things that let me control what's going oh, on. Oh no. And. With that in mind, no smothering tithe. One of my cards has to be a counter spell, but I want a really juicy, thick one. And um, Ugh, my first card I chose is part. Sublime Epiphany. So it is oh, a six drop one. counter spell, but it's that more. and so much more. Um, not only counter, do you get to uh, trigger ability or activate spell, target spell, um, it also can be turn, uh, it, trigger ability. Copy target. It can be a bounce. Copy target. It can be a copy creature, creature you can on your board. You can choose more than one. It's six drop, but for someone to draw a card. All for the low cost of six. A bounce. A counter. Um, I've seen people play counter ability. Counter a Copy a creature ability. and draw. But I personally like it because I have the monies more often than not, especially um, a lot of my decks. It's too green. expensive. Um, but at so the same time, this, there's just so much like utility. I know you don't get to play that card, but I get all these. If you have anything to reduce the cost of blue, I really love that. <sighs> it's like it's too expensive. Uh, my second card but so is much utility. Engine, um, because engine? it is the sexiest. Copy target activator triggered ability. Activated abilities. Copy instant um, or sorcery. Copy, copy target copy permanent targeted or activated ability. Um, an instant oh, good... sorcery <sighs> or a target permanence. And if you run a green deck, more often than not, you're gonna have so much money. And you know what I love more than anything, Ben? I is did not know Cara. about this. Oh, fuck. I messed up. I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah, you said you wanted to do Ah. And what I love more okay, than anything. It's an artifact. <laughs> what I love you can more copy than a anything permanent, is proper. A permanent bed. spell, so you have to count, copy it when it comes in. It, it reduces. But it just, yeah. <laughs> this has so much value. Anyway, These uh, artifacts, magic, sh and just the shenanigans it. you get up to and the really ramp you get up to. Changes, oh my god. And I love what they've done with it. And they've made it feel fresh and new in a way that I previously didn't think they could. Also, by the way, uh, before sorry, I that video, last card. Wow. Uh, we sometimes play Commander or Magic on uh, Marcus's Twitch, so you can check that out. I need to go check this out. Play, I want to see what kind of uh, crazy ass deck he has. Oh, he has slippers. Leave a clip here. Just oh, yeah, drop it slippers. in, as kind of at the end. Uh, anyway, that's that's it. Okay, goodbye. I'm just. I thought this would be him freaking out, like, oh my god, there's so much ramp, and instead it's like, no, I like where they're at, there's so much more fun to do, and it's like, you know, it's right. I thought he was going to bash on it, it's like, it's not the same, kind of like what he does when he talks about 3.5, it's like, there's that bit of nostalgia, but also, sorry, not 3.5, fourth edition of D&D. &D. But I was talking about, it's like, shit, I need to go, I did, I, there's some of these cards I know are in the store near my house, and I want to go there now, why is my wallet screaming in pain? Oh, it knows what's about to happen. God damn, between this and the Joe Cat video that I know people are going to tell me to watch next, because honestly, I was going to watch it next, but I thought, you know what? No, just for the sake of my wallet, I'm going to watch this instead, because there's no way it's going to be like, hey, this is great, it's really fun. And then just the idea of having the freaking camera pointed down at your car so you can play on Discord if you have a few people with a visible set. I literally never thought of this. That makes sense. Why have I never thought of that? We could. It would be so easy to play on Discord. I have a bunch of friends who are on Discord who I could... I'm feeling like an idiot because I literally just thought of this now, having watched the freaking video at the end. Where it's like, hey, here's how you play Magic over the internet. Without having to use all those silly apps that don't ever work. I'm not salty and I'm not salty at all. God 
damn, there's so many things I want to try now. Heck, right after this, I'm just going to go bug some of my friends because I haven't seen them in, you know, since pandemic and just see what happens because this. I'm going to have to go get new cards. God damn it. <laughs> my wallet. I, I thought watching this instead would be less dangerous to my wallet because I know when I watch the Joe Cat one, I will be tempted. And then Puffin turned around and did it anyways. And just like all the recommendations, like, I did not know this card exists. I don't know this card exists. I did not know this card exists. I thought I was keeping up. No, apparently I really wasn't. Pfft. Yeah. So all the same, everyone, you guys know the deal. There's a link to temptation down below. I know what I said. Hit that up. And when you're done, go feed my magic addiction by hitting that subscribe button and then saying, ha ha, Arier, it's too late for you. Just write that in the comments. So I'll understand. And yeah, you're completely right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All the same. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.